We are live on Facebook. Let me get out of this window here so we don't end up hearing ourselves. Good morning, everyone. It is that time of the week. Martin Bama and I are here with you, and we are going to be discussing some of the key takeaways that uh, we both got from Family Reunion. And recently, Martin, you also went to the Metrics Mastermind with Ben Kinney. So you kind of had this double whammy of education recently. Um, and I would love to unpack some of that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, there were a few really pivotal moments, at least at Family Reunion, and it sounds like it bled into Metrics as well. Um, one that comes to mind for me that really touched a lot of hearts is the happiness advantage with Sean Aker. He was the keynote speaker at Family Reunion. Did that also come up at Metrics or was that just at Family Reunion? Uh, that was just a Family Reunion, but at Metrics we talked about you know, the organized tomorrow today, which has some of the same type of principles. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, it, it, what was really coming across is how important your mindset is, right? It's all sort of dealing with mindset and um, your level of success. There's some real powerful things that I picked up, especially from Organized Tomorrow Today. Yeah, I and, and I was just sharing with you, I was shocked at how many times that the top individuals, just when you whittle it down with them, they were on stage talking about wealth building, talking about mindset, work-life balance uh, and, and their goals it all came back to this idea of purpose, which is the big why, right? Um, and so why don't you share with us a little bit, like what role, what role did that play in your thinking about, you know, planning your tomorrow today? You know, it, it's all about becoming very, you know, a lot of times we like to work off of to-do lists, all this, and we do a lot of busy work and stuff like that, right? And the planning, uh, organizing tomorrow today talks a lot about setting your priorities. And uh, I, I think a lot of times success, uh, confidence is an important part of success, right? And a lot of times very successful people were always focusing on, um, you know, you have what they call the gain versus the gap, right? And as a successful, we're always going for the next goal. We're always focused on the gap. And that can be very defeating over, over time. And we have to learn that, no, let's also focus some energy on the gain. And so one of the exercises that they talked about in this book is that, Every day you write three things that you did really well. And you do that over a period of time. And what's gonna happen is your confidence, you become very focused on your gains and your confidence will grow with that, right? And then the other question you ask yourself every day, what's the one thing I'm gonna work on tomorrow that's going to really move me closer towards my, my goal? So it's just a, a fascinating process to move us into a, a space where um, we focus on, uh, on growth and uh, we focus on our priorities to get us to our goal. What he talked about in that book too, is like a lot of times, you know, we are basically as humans, hardwired to focus on our problems mm -hmm. as opposed to our solutions. And when you, and I'm giving a real very generic update here, but um, when you're focusing on problems, what's happening, your body's releasing cortisol, right? Which results in stress and all these other horrible things, you know, that are not good for your body. When you're focusing on solutions, it's amazing how something clicks in your brain, right? And your body starts focusing on you know, releasing endorphins and suddenly you get this, you know, uh, this uh, ability to think clearer and to, to be more positive and stuff like that. And so a uh, really powerful exercise. You know, um, I, it's, a, it's amazing to me how these two very separate topics and two very separate books or, you know, ways of thinking right all came back to the same thing, which is every day reflect on three things, right? Yeah. And it could be yeah. three things you did well, but for the happiness advantage, it was what specific three things have happened to you or in your world that you are grateful for in the yeah. last 24 yeah. hours. It was really important to do the last 24 hours. Um, and I encourage anyone who's on here who has children, right? Start thinking along these lines with the kids because I can yeah. tell you, um, Sean Aker called it brushing your brain. And he said, brush your teeth. Why don't you brush your brain? <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't a seller. <laughs> oh, God, no, no. Um, but, but anyhow, I've been doing this with my youngest because he is predispositioned to stress out or focus on the negative. And um, what Sean Aker was saying is that this is actually, this process of doing this daily is actually more powerful than the strongest antidepressant out there. Oh, oh, absolutely. You know, they say right now, they say, you know, Traditionally, I don't know how they discovered this, but about 8% of the population could probably be on an antidepressant. 
in our society, it's over 30%, right? Because we, we haven't learned the tricks to, to, to um, you know, to, to focus. manage our mindset. A, yeah, no, completely, completely. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so I love this. And, you know, you think about these really inspirational stories of folks who maybe didn't have the right environment to predispose them to success. And if you really study those folks or, you know, you watch the emotional movies, that underdog story, they all had something in common. They thought they could. Yes. Right? And they powered through and they persevered. And a lot of that is mindset. And I think that can be really greatly overlooked. One thing that was striking to me, and let's get into wealth building a little bit. By the way, if you haven't watched the keynote speech from Family Reunion or know Sean Aker, please go look him up. Yeah. It was an incredible speech. And he has a TED Talk. The book is called The Happiness Advantage. He has a new one called Big Potential. Um, and these are ways in which you can manage and control your level of happiness with very easy steps. And it's all backed by research. Well, um, yeah. But let's go into wealth building because I think we don't focus enough on taking the action to build wealth in our lives. We can talk about it all day long. We, ha we can have great aspirations, but quite often we do not actually invest or save that capital for investment first and foremost. It comes as an afterthought and we're always behind the ball. Right. So talk to us a little bit, what were some of the ideas and, and discussions happening at a high level around wealth building? You know, one of the, because I've, I've, I've been an investor for a long time. We own a, a number of investment properties. The one thing I really learned, um, what Ben did is he actually put six businesses up. Uh, these are businesses that he was involved with on negotiating, on purchasing, and, and some he bought, some he didn't. And they were everything from like a, um, a website to a commercial building, to a real estate company, to a software company. And he had us said, you guys, I'm going to be the seller. I want you to ask me eight questions so that then you put together an offer, okay? So all, we were in groups and we would all, you know, each group would focus on one business. And what the fascinating lesson I learned from that is so many sales could happen if you just simply ask the questions. Like here, we're all focused on numbers, right? And um, like, oh yeah, we gotta get this for, but you know what, if you would have asked more questions, you, know, you would find out like, for instance, that one of the, the commercial buildings tenants had just, broken their lease, right? And they were leaving. All of a sudden there was going to be this huge gap, uh, you, which meant you have a seller who's really wanting to sell the building or people who are like 80 years old. They don't necessarily want a down payment. They just want a guarantee of certain payments over time. So you do seller finance. I mean, it was amazing how we found out in a lot of these transactions, it wasn't even about the money. It was about finding out what that person needs. This is, you know what I mean? And, and the other thing that I learned is how many times Ben said, yeah, I did this. I didn't have the money. And a lot of times we allow that to hold us back. But yet, you know what? If you have, you're very intentional. You've got a plan. This is what you want to go. This is where you want, this is where you want to go. You're going to find the money. You know what you're I'm saying? find a way to get there. Yeah. There is, money should never be the limitation. And that, that was a real eye opener to me because I think so many of us say, gosh, I don't have the money for that. Uh, but you really have to open your mind. And, uh, but the most important thing, especially when it comes to dealing with businesses or, or especially I think more of the commercial what are the needs of that seller, right? And just really ask a lot of questions. Like when we made the offer, we were going to offer all this down payment and do this and that. And then finally, when we were able to ask more questions, realized the seller did not want it. He wanted, what was more important was that he had monthly payments for 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I love about this, and um, have you ever read the book, Never Split the Difference? No, I don't think so. I, I'm reading this book right now. It's written by Chris Voss and it's about negotiating. And this guy was an FBI negotiator and he did hostage situations. And he ended up going to Harvard Law School and going kind of um, face to face with the Harvard Law School negotiating department. And they learned from him that, you know, we try to be rational. We try to make what we think is the best offer based yeah. on what we can. Yeah. But what he realized is when you calm it down and you connect with people and then you ask great questions and you focus on not what they're stating that they want but the why behind it exactly you can often bring them right into pitching to you Definitely. an idea about what they want oh, yeah. and, and so I thought that was fascinating and it kind of it you know all these all the the happiness advantage never split the difference what we're hearing from the wealth builders it's all really tying together to get us to slow down Right. Connect right. with people and get great information and listen 
so that they're telling us what they want. And then we just make it happen. Yeah. And when you're intentional, you're always looking for opportunities, right? A lot of people, it's not like I'm going to find something today. You, it's got to be top of mind that this is what you're looking at. So I've been thought to the point, you know what? I'm going to make a habit of every week talking to one or two business owners and see what is their situation, right? Because there's a lot of people out there that they're stuck in a situation they don't really like. And um, you offer a solution, right? And like sometimes it's even where you allow them to stay, keep an ownership portion, right? But you control the, I mean, so I just learned that, my gosh, there's an entire world out there if you just learn how to find out what the other person wants. Well, and Bo and Kimber um, with Keller Williams at Family Reunion, did you catch them speaking during the wealth building portion? I didn't, no. Okay, Bo and Kimber spoke about wealth building, and I think the breakout is available online now. You can watch the video, um, and they were fantastic. And one of the things they talked about was they were always looking for opportunities. The millionaire real estate investor tells us the same thing. You don't just look for an opportunity in you look okay. as a daily habit. And before then, you start to be able to identify, boom, opportunity, boom, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And you make it happen. You figure out a way. Yeah. Um, I do believe, you know, whatever you focus on expands, right? And you put it out in the universe. And you're, if you're, like I said, you have to be intentional. It's some of the trans that things that have fallen on my lap, I just happen to, well, I say I happen to be in the right place at the right time. But it's more than that, right? Because I'm always making sure that I'm always exploring different opportunities. Well, you're always showing up to the conversation or starting a conversation. And by because of that, you know, you're going to get exposed to those opportunities more because it's it is top of mind with you. And you're always, you know, it's always in some sort of flow of your connections. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, but the other thing I noticed about Bo and Kimber and we're talking about businesses is they were not afraid to fail. No. They, they would start a business. They yeah. see what it could do, right? And they had multiple yeah. businesses going at once and they were okay with one of them failing. Yeah. Great, we tried that. Put a lid on it, yeah. shove it away. That's not for us, right? But this one's working here. And because they were always looking to, to at least get through that trial period, they ended up with some really great gems and they learned what is not in their lane. Right. I mean, I've learned one thing, stay in your lane. The same with things you know. I've lost a lot of money and, and like, you know, I, I was involved in a nightclub and you know I mean, you name it there's things that um yeah no you, you want to say you're like but you're you do it you are good you're never going to succeed 100 percent of the time right and that, that's where and so a lot of people allow that fear to hold them back right and you have to be willing to step over that line absolutely and and the mrea mrei the millionaire real estate investor also has the same advice you know yeah. stick with what you know at least at first when you get comfortable and you have some success in it then you want to learn to branch out leverage the experience of other people do not just go doing it on your own right um, okay martin any other major takeaways from metrics or from family reunion that you think it would benefit people to reach out and want to learn more about I mean, those were two really powerful things. You know, the uh, metrics, you also read a book um, and I dealt with all about presenting. And, you know, I'm doing webinars now, I'm going to speak, and I just realized I was doing a lot wrong. And just you know, understanding the, um, you know, the importance of certain things when you do a presentation. Um, and so, again, it's, a, it's called simply, oh, I can't think of the name of it. But also, because especially because I'm doing a lot of webinars and that kind of stuff, I learned a lot of really powerful lessons about how to maximize the effectiveness of that, right? It's, again, it's just another skill set. Do you think we could perhaps discuss that next week? Because I know a lot of people are trying to have, you know, buyer seminars, seller seminars, lender right. seminars. Um, and, and I no. don't, I find it to be very hit or miss. And so if, if you'd be open to that, I think. No, I'd love to. Because we use it even more, right? For listing presentations, buyer presentations, right? I just realized there's a lot of things I was doing that, my gosh, you know what? Uh, like the talk about, it, and I'm going to do this for you. They don't care about, I'm going to do this for you. What's, you know, I mean, just keep, just word, the use of words and phrasing. It was, it was yeah, I'll definitely, because it was very powerful. Okay, fantastic. I have one last question for you. And this one, I will admit, I get a little emotional over this one because it's, it's sort of my pet peeve in this industry. Um, there are KW agents, I'll just be real, KW agents make a lot of time for training and education. Yeah. I think a lot more time for it than other, you know, realtors I've met at other brokerages. And um, the real estate industry can be very, very busy and time consuming. 
what words do you have for folks who maybe are not finding the time to make time for education and training or you undervalue it possibly because I, I see our agents and they have so much more time for it than other agents. What do you think is the difference? You know, a coach told me a long time ago, like, you know, like even like 10 minutes of planning or 15 minutes of planning will give you hours of extra time, just like with training. Like, why would you just, come? because if you're not uh, getting training, you are getting trained through hard knocks, right? Because you're going out there and you, you, you learn a little bit, right? And you fail, then you go back. And then as opposed to with training, um, it, you're just, you're learning from other people's, you know, you, other people are, are, you're learning from other people's experience, right? Um, I, to me, it's just such a total non-brainer. I, I don't, um, everyone has an extra hour or two here and there. They really do. And it's a matter of just time blocking for that stuff, right? Like, so if you, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Well, and I love what you said, you either get trained by hard knocks, missed opportunities or frustrations, right? Right, right, right. So you get trained proactively. Correct. There you go. You set yeah. up perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Martin, uh, I just want to thank you for your time today. If folks want to learn more about this, I encourage you all to put your comments down in the section, share this video with people you love that would benefit from it. Um, and Martin, how can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more about working with your team, buying and selling, you know, getting their license? Uh, they can always reach me at my office at 734-761-3060. All right. And I am Danielle Mapes, team leader of Keller Williams Ann Arbor. You can reach me at 310-748-7442. We're here to answer your questions. We're all, always looking for great talent and we're looking to come from contribution and help. So I uh, hope you all have a great week. And Martin, we'll see you next week to discuss seminars. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, bye -bye. Bye.